It's always nice to speak to an exhausted audience. Thanks, Jim. You've, you've completely worn us out. Um, I'm not going to start with a lecture on economics, um, how we're going to pay for this. Um, that's, I'm, I'm passing the buck on to JRF for that one. Uh, you're coming up with the strategy, so you need to come up with a way to pay for it. But no, but seriously, we are an incredibly wealthy country. I think that's been said many times over the last two days. Um, it's not beyond our, our wit, I think, to try and find ways to use that wealth more creatively and better for, for everyone who lives here. So I think we can afford um, to make the kind of changes that, um, that we require. And not only can we afford it, but it's essential, it's necessary, it will save us money. We need to do it um, and we need to make the argument for it. But anyway, I don't want to detain you any longer. Than, uh, than is absolutely necessary. You've given a lot over the last two days, so I don't want to keep you here too much longer. I just want to say a few final words um, to sum up and to thank some people. The first thing to say, I, I think I probably said this last year, at last year's assembly, is that um, I didn't expect to be closing another um, Scottish assembly for tackling poverty, so this is our fifth now. Um, but when we started planning these back in 2008, um, we didn't really expect to be, this to be something that would, that would keep happening. It was a project that would happen three times and that would be, it would be over. Um, but that's not the way it's gone. And I'm very happy that's not the way it's gone. And I think it hasn't gone that way because there's a desire for change. And that's not just come about because of um, the economic crisis. There's been a desire for change for a long time, but I think the Assembly has um, capitalised on that. The process that we've started here has capitalised on that. And there's a desire for change, but I think the Assembly has also shown that there's a, a need for a different kind of conversation about how we tackle poverty. Um, that, that conversation has touched on many issues over the last couple of days. It's touched on inward poverty, it's touched on the impact of sanctions, housing, community empowerment, fuel poverty, the list really does go on and on about the issues that we've covered and I think the, um, the recommendations we've come up with show the breadth of that conversation and the, and the depth of it and what can be achieved in two very quick days. But I think the thing that's different about the conversation that we have here is that the, the way that people who are affected by poverty are involved in that discussion. And the one, the one other word that hasn't been mentioned in our feedback that struck me from the start of the assembly yesterday morning and has been repeated over and over again is, and the, and the word that connects all of those issues that I mentioned just a second ago, is dignity. Um, it's, the, it's the idea that really does link all of the discussions. So dignity in our social security system, in our labour market, in the way that we treat those who are most vulnerable and disadvantaged in our society. And I think the, the Assembly has become a model for how we can treat people with the experience of poverty with dignity and respect. People like Louise and Martin, who opened this conference for us yesterday, they aren't problems, they aren't people to be sorted out. Um, they're people that, have, that, that hold within them the solutions to poverty. And the people that, that we don't just listen to, but that we actively involve in working alongside to find the solutions to poverty. And I think when we do that, we improve our chances for success in tackling the, the issues that we've been discussing over the last two days. And I would just, I, I will go through a list of thanks, but I want to thank uh, Louise and Martin in his absence for their contributions yesterday. I think they really set the tone and gave us really a lot to think about. So thank you. <laughs> so um, I hope, like uh, Mark, I, thought, I hope we can leave the Assembly today with some optimism. We have huge challenges ahead of us. But what we've been doing over the last two days is trying to find, start to find some of the practical solutions to the problems that we face. Um, and I think if 
if we do, as Julia Unwin suggested in, in her address to the, the Assembly, if we make tackling poverty our organising purpose, if it's our focus, whatever our, our organisation, whatever our role within our communities or within policy making, if we make that our purpose, then I, I really do believe that not only will we find the money, but we'll find the will to make the kind of long-term changes that we need. Uh, and, and usually when I finish this, I say I, will, you know, I don't want to make any commitments about next year's assembly, which I'm not going to make any commitments about next year's assembly, but I'm, I'm strangely confident that it will happen again, if not next year, then at some point in the future. Because, as I say, there is a need for this kind of conversation. There is a need to bring people with direct experience of poverty together with policy makers, with activists from voluntary organisations in other places, um, other civil society organisations to work together to find the solutions. So, no, no guarantees about next year, but I suspect that we'll be back in some shape or form with another Scottish Assembly. So I just want to say very finally uh, just a couple of words of thanks. I want to firstly thank um, Jim McCormick, who I usually forget to thank. So thank you, Jim, for chairing us again. He, do, he does a very fine job, and I think we all benefit from his, his good chairing every year. Um, I also want to thank um, Laura, Catherine and Poe, our, our little organising team within the Poverty Alliance, for all the work that they've done. Um, particularly over the last few months in bringing us towards the Assembly. I don't think any of them are in the room. Oh, Laura is. So thank you very much. <laughs> all of our speakers, I've mentioned Louise and Martin already, but all of our speakers, both the community activists who spoke in each of the sessions, to our facilitators, the many speakers, I don't actually know how many speakers we had, a lot, really high quality inputs. That, that I think have really helped us get towards uh, some of the solutions that we need over the last two days. So thanks to all our speakers. Thanks to um, Ross and Ern and Chris for providing the technical and media backup uh, that, that really helps to uh, make the Assembly what it is. Um, thanks, of course, to Joseph Rowntree Foundation for funding the Assembly this year, and particularly to Chris um, from uh, GRF for, for helping us and for establishing something that we haven't talked a lot about over the last two days, the, the panel sessions that have been going on for the last six months in the lead up to this assembly. Uh, and thank you again just to all of you for coming along and contributing so much and to really um, giving us the, the strength to, to keep carrying on this fight and to hopefully be reporting back next year more positive progress. So thank you very much and safe journey home.